This is a Cushlin 350, which is commonly rented at Home Depot. And I'm going to show you the lazy man's way of how to use this. Uh, first, I'm going to show you that uh, before you get started, you want to get a grease gun like this. And you want to come back here, attach these, squeeze until you start seeing stuff come out from between the seals here. Cut off. But you, you'll start to see grease coming out from here. You put it on this connector here and you're going to want to see grease coming out here. That way you know that you're all greased up. Let me show you the job I've got working on now. This is the section that's about a four, five by five section that I poured a couple days ago. It took me about five hours to do it. And then this is about the same area section. And after trying some new techniques I'm going to show you, it's only taken me about an hour or maybe an hour and a half to get this far. So twice as fast. Let me show you what the problem was and uh, the fix. So this is looking at the inside of the mixer. The problem is that if you just follow the directions, you dump the whole bag in at a time, either with the water in first or the water in afterwards, the mix tends to get stuck in the back of the mixer down in here. And then you have to stop it and you have to get a shovel and you have to pick it out and start it up again to get, try to get access to the other areas. It's just terrible. It was taking me twice as long to do it that way. And it was really hurting to lift these 80 pound bags of concrete up and into that hopper. Um, actually, now I've gone down to 60 pound bags, which I think is easier. But what I'm going to show you is adding it a little bit at a time. First, I'm going to start. I've already got three quarters the amount of water that I needed in here. And the directions say three, uh, well, for two bags of, of uh, 60 pound, it would be five quarts. Um, and, or two pounds of 80 pounds, two bags of 80 pounds, it would be seven quarts. I've got three quarters added already. And then I'm going to shovel it in one bit at a time, and that seems to work great. It makes the whole process go a lot faster and smoothly. So, and then afterwards, I'm going to show you how to turn a concrete into aggregate. That's three bags of 60 pound concrete and about seven and a half liters of water. It looks like the mix is pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and dump it and then show you how to do aggregate. Okay, first I'm gonna try to smooth it out as much as I can. And one of the problems with the aggregate, trying to match aggregate, is that the aggregate's all with different sizes. And in particular, my aggregate has some larger pieces in it than 
this concrete tends to have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sprinkle rocks of a larger size on the surface. And then those rocks will be the ones that are exposed, make it look more natural compared to the rest of the concrete here. try to get these rocks tamped down in watching for any places where there are too many rocks stuck together that's not going to work very well and I have done some aggregate work test areas before so I know this technique does work it works better than there's several different techniques that are discussed one is using sugar that did not work out very well um, I think that's hard to control getting the mixture right so that the concrete does cure it all um, then there's some special commercial additives you can use I didn't really have access to that and then they were simply wait and put some rocks in there wait and then spray off the top layer and that worked beautifully so that is the method that I've chosen to stick with. an hour or so until I can see like a fingerprint show up in the concrete and then start closing it off. Alright so it's been about, probably about two hours since I started this end. If I put my thumb into it you can see that leaves a dent and um, it's not so it's been not two hours on the other part, but I'm going to start washing and we'll just see how it turns out. So you're going to use a hose and try to gently wash away the fines. And I'm also going to vacuum it up because I, I don't want this water getting into my lawn. Hours have passed since I washed up that first section. 
direction. I don't know if I've waited too long here. Now been more than a week since I poured these and I wanted to come back and show you how the job turned out. I think it turned out pretty well. Uh, this section here was poured first and it's, maybe it's just me but it seems like it's a slightly darker color than this section. I don't know why. Um, both sections more gravel came up than I wanted to. Let's do a close-up and this has been now washed and then pressure washed and one of the things I learned after doing this was that I probably wanted to wait longer uh, before starting to wash this gravel out. You can see that there, you know, it's been pressure washed, but there's still a few little rocks that are coming off of this. Uh, it's not definitely, you can tell it's not a professional job. Let's take a look at the professional job over here. You can see that the surface is much more uh, even with the rocks. And then this one here, again, same problem. I've got some areas where there's no rocks and the rocks are sticking out too far from the gravel. And again, I attributed that to probably not waiting long enough. So I was able to learn from this and I did a second area after this one. And let's go take a look at how that worked by waiting longer. This is an area I did after that first job. And the advantage is being on a driveway right here, I was able to bring the van or truck right up against here and then transfer the 60 pound bags directly out of the van and into the mixer and so that saved a ton of time definitely recommend that I couldn't do it on the other job just because the location this job I waited a good four maybe five hours really as long as I could before it was completely dark and before I washed it off and I like this job a lot more you can see that uh, the rocks are almost right at the surface there's just a little bit of unevenness and uh, you know, overall, I don't, there's still some, some rocks that are at the surface here that are coming off. Now, this has actually been driven over, but it's still pretty good. Um, I'm not so sure that it, the sprinkling of the rocks helped a ton. I mean, like a rock like this definitely came from the sprinkling, but most of these little rocks that are coming out of here, these were from the original concrete mix, probably. But overall, it's worked well. And I just want, for reference, wanted to show you another area that was done, quote unquote, professionally. Here's a patch that I had done a couple of years ago. And this one I paid, well, it, they wanted, I had quotes of about $1,000 and I finally got someone to come out and do it for like $600. <laughs> you, can see, so you can see how much money you can save by doing it yourself. And you know, it's a little bit better. The, the rocks are still uneven and the color, you know, the color is never gonna match, unfortunately, because of the age of the concrete. But I think I did a pretty good job actually on my second one compared to this one. So bottom line is this can save you a lot of money. I would definitely recommend unless you're a really strong guy going with 60 pound bags and if possible bring your van right up to the site and then you can transfer them directly into the mixer. Otherwise use a shovel and do that with 80 pound bags so you don't hurt your back. And um, don't put too much in at the same time because otherwise it'll stick to the back of the mixer.